Okay, students, now there comes another question. It says find the curvature and the radius of curvature for the curve parameterized by uh, the vector in question 15 above. Yeah, this was the vector parameterizing our curve in the question number 15. R of t equals ti plus 3 sine tj plus 3 cos tk. So we are now going to uh, find the curvature and the radius of the curvature of, you see, the curve made by this curve. So the, the solution runs like this. Look, this is your R of t, so we need to find its derivative. So the derivative of this R of t is the derivative of this one, and it is i, and for this it will be minus 3 cos tj, and for this one it will be minus 3 sin tk, because the derivative makes this. Now, once you obtain this, what comes next is the norm or the magnitude of this uh, vector. So, the magnitude of this vector is going to be the square root of students, the sum of the square of the components, which actually is 1 here, because 1 square is 1, and 3 cos t square, which basically is 9 cos square t, and the square of minus 3 sine t, which is 9 sine square t. So, students here, we can take 9 as a common out between these two. And then cos squared plus sine squared can come, and that makes 1. And now 1 times 9 is 9, and 9 plus 1, 10. So you are left with radical 10. So this is the norm of the derivative. So clearly, the unit tangent vector is going to be uh, t of t equals r derivative at t divided by the norm of r derivative at t. And we knew what r derivative at t is, as it has been calculated here. It is i plus 3 cos tj minus 3 sine tk so you just simply copy uh, this one and have it here as a numerator and the norm of this r derivative at t is radical 10 so you just take that again here so finally you are going to have this one i plus 3 cos tj minus 3 sine tk of radical 10 so radical 10 is actually a common denominator for these three components so this one, 1 over radical 10i plus 3 over radical 10 cos tj minus 3 over radical 10 sine tk can come. So this is basically is a unit tangent vector. So uh, how do we define curvature students? The curvature is basically obtained by taking the norm of, you see, I, t derivative divided by the norm of r derivative. So we need to determine the norm of this ten t derivative. So before we determine the norm, we have to know what t derivative at t is. And that basically is obtained by simply carrying out the derivative of the components obtained here for t of t. Since this is a constant one, its derivative turns to be zero. And here, the derivative comes to be minus 3 sine t over radical 10. And it is the y component j minus uh, the derivative of this one is cos t. And it will take three, minus 3 radical 10 as it is now you are having t derivative at t so we need to look for the norm students the norm of this uh, or magnitude of this t derivative at t and this is going to be the square root of the sum of the square of the components here we are having minus 3 over radical 10 sine t so square root it will be 9 over 10 and again minus 3 radical 10 cos t square root 9 over 10 again sine square t so we can take 9 over t as a common out and you are left with cos square t and sine square t. We know that the sum makes 1. So uh, radical 9 over 10 is going to come, and we knew that radical 9 is 3, and radical 10 is going to come as it is. So this is, you see what we can get. Now comes the curvature. You see, the curvature, uh, kappa, is defined as the rate at which the unit uh, vector is, you know, changing its direction along the curve, and that is obtained by using this ratio, it is the norm of t derivative at t divided by r derivative at t. We have determined what t derivative at t is, basically, students. t derivative at t is the norm of t derivative at t is here. It is 3 over radical 10, so you just take that as it is. And then the norm of r derivative at t is already obtained. It's radical 10, so if you, when, you, when you take the ratio of these two, 3 over radical 10 times radical 10, which actually is 3 over 10, can come, which is 0 0.3. So the curvature value uh, is, enabler, is enabling us to determine uh, to what extent the curve is, you know, uh, uh, getting bending, you know, the curve to what extent, you know, our curve is 
getting you know uh, to what extent our tangent each tangent vector is changing its direction so this much amount 0 0.3 amount uh, is you know our unit tangent vector changing at along the curve so you're asked also to find the radius of curvature so the radius of curvature is you see rho and it is given by 1 over kappa and 1 over kappa is you see 1 over 3 over 100 3 over 10 which actually is 10 over 3 yeah you'll get this value to be 10 over 3 this is basically the radius of curvature so having this into account what comes next is question number 17 and that is finding the gradient of a given function a function of two variables in fact very simple so we are now going to find the gradient of this function uh, at the point minus 3 4 this is basically a, a normal vector uh, on the surface of this f of z is equal to f of xy which is normal to the surface at this particular point at minus 3 4 so let's look now let's look for this vector so the gradient of every function f of x y is given by you know uh, f the partial derivative of f with respect to x at x y along the i component and the partial derivative of f with respect to y along the j component so what is expected from us is just to carry out the partial derivative of the given function so clearly as you see we are having f of x y is equal to x ln of x plus y so applying product rule because the partial derivative looks for that the derivative of x is 1 and 1 times ln of x plus y is ln of x plus y now take x as it is and then try to derivate the, this ln of x plus y in terms of x so the derivative of ln is as you know 1 over you see x so in x x plus y is used but we are having you see a coefficient of x1 so 1 is going to appear and times x x can come that's all about the x component and coming to the y component you see in the case of the derivative of this function with respect to y x is taken as it is as you see and the partial derivative of ln of x plus y with respect to y is 1 over x plus y so you are left with x times x plus y so you are asked to determine the gradient of this function at minus 3 4 so you are going to substitute minus 3 and 4 in place of x and y respectively in the obtained expression so you are going to have this one ln of minus 3 plus 4 plus minus 3 over minus 3 plus 4i minus 3 over minus 3 plus 4 you simply substituted minus 3 and 4 in place of x and y so this makes minus 3i minus 3j because students this is 1 as you see and ln 1 is 0 and this is 1 minus 3i can come here and again this is 1 minus 3j can follow so this vector is a vector which is normal to this surface at the point minus 3 4 so proceeding to question number 18 we are having now you see a function of three variables x y z actually there was z here students please add that z here x comma y comma z given by 4x cubed minus 2y is a part of 4 plus z squared so you are asked again to find the gradient of this function at the point at this point so again what you need to do is you have to carry out the partial derivative of f with respect to x with respect to y with respect to z so as you see the gradient of this function f of x y z is denoted by del of f of x y z which is the partial derivative of f with respect to x uh, along i partial derivative of f with respect to y along j and partial derivative of f with respect to z along k so students when you derivate this function with respect to x you will face 12 x squared okay 3 comes down in multiples 4 12 x squared along i and with respect to y it will be minus 8 y q it will be minus 8 y q students this is y q please have a correction here to be minus 8 y q and this is going to be 2 z k student 2 z k so uh, you are given uh, this uh, point minus 1 1 2 so students let's substitute minus 1 in place of x and y you see in place of y we need to put 1 and here 2 so uh, minus 1 comes here and 1 times 12 12 i so even though this one was y cubed because of the fact that we are having one here this never changed basically it is negative 8 j because y cube is 1 cube it is actually 1 1 times minus 8 is minus 8 j and now putting 2 there in place of z now 2 times 2 makes what 
four K four so along the Z components you are having this so twelve I minus eight J plus four K is going to be the gradient of uh, this uh, function of three variables.